I'll give you the dealer's choice. You want to talk about the way the game was played or the way what happened towards the end of the game uh, with Angel Reese? Which one? Which one is you know leaps out to you more? From yesterday. Yeah, for as a former player, Rich, it's it's the way the game was officiated. I mean, I I love what you know. We can jump on Twitter and go down the rabbit hole and see everybody's takes. I, I love that. Uh, you know, when these when these young women go to the WNBA, I hope they would be on my team. I mean, Angel Reese is phenomenal. She's a double double machine. Caitlin Clark, the best player in the country for a reason. Like, I, it, it's insane how good they are. And I would hope any either one of them would be on my team and do what they did. And whether they're, you know, flashing fingers in front of their faces or, you know, getting the crowd involved, uh, you want to see it. I love it. Um, the officiating for me was, was the issue. So it just seemed to me just from, from, the, from jump, it, it, it was all yeah. – there was tons of whistles. Uh, uh, I'm wondering what, you know, what you were thinking as you were watching this game unfold and the – fouls started piling up on all the stars in this game i'm literally shocked and i tweeted that rich i mean listen as a former player who has played in this game and knows what it takes to get to this game to see your best players like I, i'm tuning in not only as a fan of, of women's basketball and somebody who played it but to see these superstars like to watch angel reese sit on the bench because she gets two fouls in the first quarter is insane to me and the second one, she made a great basketball play, deflects the ball off of an Iowa player, and it's possession up for LSU. I, I just – for Caitlin Clark to get three fouls in the first half of this basketball game – and listen, so if I'm a, an official, and I used to – I was a captain, Rich, on pretty much every team I played on, mm-hmm. whether it was in college or the WNBA. You want to have conversations with officials. And if, if, if it wasn't involving me and it was a teammate, I'm walking over, I'm saying, listen, what do, what do we need to do better here? How can we improve this? My coach is doing the same thing. For Lisa Bluter, the coach of Iowa, to come out after the game, I thought quite eloquently and and say we couldn't have a conversation with these three officials was so shocking to me in such a huge, momentous game. We have more eyeballs than we ever have on, on women's basketball because of how good the basketball is and these superstars that are in the making. Um, and I, I haven't even got into the technical foul. It, it, to me, I've always been a player. I always was a player, Rich. Mm-hmm. And if I don't play now so I can say these things. Like, if I was still playing in the WNBA, I ain't coming on your show and, and saying this. <laughs> right. <laughs> because these, these officials are, are refing at the professional level as well. And, you know, Lisa Jones uh, is a very good official. She was on this crew. Uh, she's very communicative on, on the floor, super even keel. She didn't actually make the technical foul call in the third quarter on Caitlin Clark. Um, it was Spurlock Welsh, I believe. Um, I think to say her first name is Pilani. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even know where to start. If you team me up better, maybe I can get myself there. But <laughs> well, it just it just struck me the the, the explanation after the game didn't make sense yeah. based on you know, the rule that they were enforcing because there was already a, a delay of game penalty. It's just like, why are we doing this? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Like, this is the championship on the line, Stacy. you know? And 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 again, like, I, I understand both teams had foul trouble, and, and, and I guess you got to call it when you see it. I mean, we've had this conversation at the Super Bowl, coming off the Super Bowl, as you know, with James Bradbury. Do you call it yeah. when you see it? We had that San Diego State um free throws towards the end of its elite eight uh contest and their their winner to make the final four do you make that call do you not uh, i understand you got to call it the way you see it but good lord um okay you know yeah. that's that's my tee up i guess on it we're you know? talking about discretionary calls so i texted with a couple of officials that are active um officials basketball officials right now as soon as it happens uh-huh not a chance in hell they're making that technical foul call. Unless it's egregiously insulting or there is some sort of um, intentional physical violation uh, with players or staff members or like you're talking about my mama or something like that, you're not making that call. This is a discretionary decision. So I'll take it a step further, right? So Lisa Jones, I believe was the head official, so she made the statement to justify the call, right? She yes. referenced, uh, I believe it was Rule 10, uh, Section 12 yeah, in right. the uh, the rules book. Uh, three, I believe the 
I want to say the article is 3K, Rich. Sure. So Rule 10, if you go actually look at NCAA rules, Rule 10 is fouls and penalties. When you go specifically to Section 12, it is technical fouls. So they go to Section 12 and they cite basically that she, you know, she didn't, uh, you know, immediately pass the ball to the nearest official after the whistle was blown after the warning six minutes previous. Right. So the previous warning was at around the 730 mark in the third quarter because I'm sitting here watching. I'm like, why would they give them a warning? This is ridiculous. So with just just about a minute left in the third quarter, we're talking about a nine point championship basketball game. Right, the momentum has swung a little bit. Now LSU was the better team. I thought they should have won the game. Right? Iowa had a better the best player in the country. LSU had a better team. I thought they would win it. They did. But if you want to go down this rabbit hole, Rich, then you better go down, scroll down the rule book about, I don't know, ten more lines to Article Four, and you know where I'm going with this. Which is bench technical foul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, somebody's got to be on the bench, I guess, as opposed to on the floor. Is that where you're going on on this front with well, Kim Mulkey? Bench. Stacey? Now, listen, Kim Mulkey's a very animated coach. She always has been. I played against her when I was at Oklahoma, and she was at Baylor. And she's always been that way. A lot of coaches coach that way. She's very animated, colorful, um, enigmatic. I mean, there's so many ways to describe her style on the sidelines. But if you're going down the rule book rabbit hole, then you've got to be consistent in that. And bench technical fouls under Article 4, the subheading is the head coach is responsible for the conduct and behavior of all bench personnel. Now, jump on Twitter and tell me you can't see Kim Mulkey make contact with an official or, you know, use some sort of body language to uh, to to basically suggest that the, the officials are incorrect. There are a dozen under that, under Section 4A, there are a dozen different incriminating ways in which the bench can get a technical foul. So mm. my point being, I don't want technical fouls. I don't want coaches to get them. I don't want players to get them for dropping a basketball. When, when, when this official made that call, Rich, if you go back and look, she was 10 feet away from yeah. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Okay, so Caitlin Clark drops the ball behind her, which, by the way, spin back into the field of play if you actually watch it. She drops it to the baseline. She gets in the huddle with her team, who has just had its second-best scorer in Monica Sonano get her fourth foul. Okay? Now you've got your two best players, your two top scorers with four fouls. Listen, I'd rather see Caitlin Clark go up and make a basketball play to get her fourth foul and clobber somebody then in a you know in a non-intentional way but right. clobber somebody to get that fourth foul then give them a give them a discretionary technical foul which absolutely even though LSU was going to win destroyed the momentum of this basketball game with a minute to go in the third quarter in a nine-point scoring game yeah I, I, just, it, I was blown away Stacy Dale's here on the Rich Eisen show so uh just to revisit again the way that everything ended um, do you think there? Uh, and I'll, I'll tee up on this. Do you think there's a double standard between uh, women and men with the competitive level? Um, and yes. that you know that that uh, again, Joe Burrow pointed to his ring finger. You know, um, yes, I do. Right. So I'll yes. give you the floor on, on that. I mean, go for it, Stacey. I cover the NFL. I mean, I'm standing down there watching these men play a violent sport, and if you don't think emotions are coming out. I played against Diana Taurasi. She's the greatest competitor I've ever played against because she had that moxie. She, she has that moxie. She's still playing. Like, you can't play at the highest level if you don't have some it factor. So, um, you know, to say that, you know, this, this stuff at the end of the game, like why should we be see women do this at 20 years old? Come on, people. It's 2023. This is really good basketball, great basketball, and let them play the game. I love it. I want to tune in to see it. And as far as the discretion between the men and, men's and women's game, yeah. You don't think there's trash talking going on and taunting going on all the time in both both realms? You're foolish. Like, this, it's real. Um, it, it's good. It's competitive. And when you're in the heat of the game, it happens. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 